Hey guys, Retro John here, and today I'm going to bring you the review of all our reviews. The review everybody's been clamoring to see all over the net. The review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. So come on, people, this is come again. Let's get to it. Okay, so, here we are. Um, it has finally arrived. The movie we've been waiting two years to see. Uh, the conclusion of The Force Awakens left us with a very um, interesting face-off between Rey and Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. So, how does it end? How does it continue? Well, it continues with... Spoilers! Uh, yes, this video uh, will have spoilers. Uh, it's almost near impossible to do a proper review without them. So, be forewarned. If you haven't seen the movie yet, and you don't want anything ruined, I suggest stopping now and waiting until after you uh, see the movie to continue to watch. So, still with me? You good? Here we go. Okay, so it continues with Luke taking his lightsaber as we saw at the end of The Force Awakens, and just tossed it over his shoulder. <laughs> That's the idea. Just the two years of waiting, and we see over the shoulder. Doesn't care. Walks off. Two years of waiting, that's what we get. So that was a little disappointing. And you're going to hear that a lot, disappointing, disappointing. But I'm going to tell you, for the most part, I liked this movie. Um, I didn't like it as much as The Force Awakens. I know a lot of people hated Force Awakens. <coughs> or just simply thought of Force Awakens as uh, A New Hope 2.5. Uh, I really enjoyed The Force Awakens. And I really enjoyed this one. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of humor in this movie. Again, some people had, uh, those who didn't like Thor, um, probably have the same issues with this one, too much humor. I found that the humor wasn't a lot, I thought it was a nice mix, and it worked for every scene that it was involved. It just wasn't humorous to be humorous. <coughs> so, we, um, of course we start the movie, we, you know, surprisingly we don't start the movie with the uh, Luke and Ray meeting. That comes uh, after our opening, you know, which is uh, Bo Dameron and X-Wing. The first character we see, just like in Force Awakens, the first one, the first characters we see. <coughs> uh, so, uh, do we get a lot of the answers that we've been clamoring for? Yes and no. The answers you get are kind of disappointing. I think, honestly, I believe the hype for this movie was so huge. Expectations were so big that I think they were too big. I think people had in mind what this movie was going to be, or what this movie should be, and when they found out that that's not what it was going to be, well, these aren't the answers that we're going to get, that's when people were like, oh, this movie, crap. So, do we find out who Snoke is? No. Uh, you're going to be really surprised when you find out that Snoke is definitely not Palpatine. <laughs> He's definitely not em uh, Emperor Palpatine. Does he come off like that in the last movie and the uh, first half of this movie? Definitely. But he's definitely not Palpatine, and you'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you here uh, shortly. Um, there's some nice uh, meetings between Rey and Kylo Ren, as the four, they have been somehow, as we'll find out in, later on in how in the movie, they're force connected somehow. This kind of misleads you to thinking that there's more to them than meets the eye. Like, maybe their brother and sister. Oh my god, is Rey the daughter of possibly Han and Leia, or just Han, or just Leia, and, you know, that's who left her? These are the questions that really mislead you in this movie, till you find out the big reveal. Uh, 
we find out why Luke has isolated himself. Uh, he has become a hermit. He has cut himself off with the Force. He doesn't want to be found. Uh, he doesn't want to be involved. And, I mean, you you find out the reason. You I mean, you, you, know, you get an idea in The Force Awakens, you know, because Ben betrayed him. Uh, ben Solo, Kylo Ren betrayed him. But you find out that for a split second, it wasn't just Ben Solo that was betrayed. Uh, that, that wasn't just Luke Skywalker that was betrayed. Ben Solo was kind of betrayed by Luke. Stay with me. So we're on. We're we're under the impression that uh, Kylo Ren was seduced by the dark side, and went ape shit, and killed all the Jedi in the Je in the new Jedi temple in Luke's Jedi temple. What we're told in this movie is um, what we're told in this movie is though that it that is true, Luke sensed that Ben was turning to the dark side or he had turned to the dark side snow kid won and he Ben was just waiting to turn um so he goes down to confront Ben Ben solo is sleeping uh he he reaches out the force senses that he is he he's his dark side is won over and so he ignites his green lightsaber from return of the jedi that makes a comeback in this movie. Uh, and for a split second, it was going to end it before it began. But it came to his senses. But before he could turn off that lightsaber, Ben sensed it, grabbed his blue lightsaber, and clashed with Luke. Luke was frantically, you know, Ben, no! And before he can get out any explanation... He brings the temple down on Luke, goes on the slaughtering spree, and the rest is history. Uh, Luke, of course, believes uh, he failed Ben to save him and the other students, and decided he has gone into isolation and no longer wants to be anything. He has anything have anything to do with the Force, being a Jedi. Uh, the interesting take to the new um, to, 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 to Luke and I actually enjoyed it it really harkens back to uh, a little bit to what uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was feeling <coughs> when he tried to train Anakin and feels he failed Anakin uh, the only difference is Obi-Wan continued on uh, he looked after Luke he didn't cut himself off completely as far as we know he didn't cut himself off but I think him and Yoda both kind of cut themselves off in the force so not to be found by Vader and I think that's what Luke kind of did except he cut himself off completely uh, so Ray finds him uh, she's trying to bring him back to the force uh, she's trying to not the force trying to bring him back with to the rebellion uh, wants to use the force to train her um, which, of course, uh, is going to end up happening. And this is how it happens. It's really great. And again, I warned you ahead of time. Spoiler. Spoilerific, folks. So we have uh, a surprise appearance by Yoda. And I don't mean the horrible CGI prequel Yoda. This is Return of the Jedi Yoda. <coughs> and we're some of the greatest laughs and interactions in the movie uh, come into play in this act with Yoda and Luke. Uh, where we have um, Yoda trying to tell Luke, you know, you, you still have stuff to learn here. You, um, you're not done. You know, you're still, you're still, you know, looking ahead. Not concentrating, you're not concentrating on the here and now. You're still looking ahead, just like he was um, before. Uh, there was also a nice little moment uh, that occurred before that uh, with Luke going on the Millennium Falcon and him and seeing R2 for the first time in years. Uh, and then him and R2 have a nice little conversation, just as much as you can with talking and beeping, uh, to where even R2 managed to convince him to, hey, train Ray uh, by using 
the Princess Leia hologram from A New Hope, which was kind of cool. So we have R2 who convinced him to train Rey. We got Yoda who convinced Luke to help Rey and the Rebellion. Uh, so at one point we do get our Jedi Luke, kind of. Uh, and then, I'll get to that, and this is where I think a lot of people had issues with how they handled Luke. Um, so, while all this is going on between Luke and Rey, we have what's going on out in space. And what's going out in space is the last remnants of uh, this new rebellion that has taken place. Uh, they're low on gas. They're being able to be tracked through hyperspace, which they're not supposed to somehow be able to do. But the um, uh, the New Order has found a way to track through hyperspace. So Finn and new character Rose take off to go find out uh, find find a master locksmith to help them get on Snoke's Star Destroyer and take out this tracking device. Uh, the, the, during that time, they meet uh, Valencio de Tero, de Tero, de Tero, de Tero, the Collector from the Marvel movies. <laughs> uh, they meet him, and uh, he kind of comes off as a new, kind of like a Han, Han Solo Lando mixed breed character, is the best way to describe him. And I don't think he's done because of, um, he, he ends up betraying them for money and taking off. It's the last we see him. And, uh, he's kind of a scoundrel. He's a major scoundrel. But I think he's one of those characters that will end up uh, redeeming himself in the next movie. So, going to be an interesting character to keep an eye on. <coughs> uh, let's see. Uh, during that time, I said they went after... Uh, the Master Locksmith, they didn't catch him, they got Minute, uh, Bill and Jody Tarot's character, I believe his name is DJ, or JD, in the movie, and like I said, he helps him out, only to betray them because they got caught, uh, this leads to what we saw in the trailer, Finn facing off against, um, a Captain Phasma, which, it was great to see this, we've been, this is a fight we had been waiting to see since The Force Awakens, uh, and it, 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 was worth the wait, kinda. Except uh, Captain Phasma in the new in the new trilogy is one of my favorite characters. Uh, not my maybe not my favorite favorite, but I think definitely the top one of the top three or four favorite characters. Uh, and um, as far as we know, they really did Bubba fed her. They killed her off. <laughs> so yeah. Disappointing there, but the fight between the two were kind of, or it was kind of cool, and there was major heat and banter between the two. Both did an excellent job. And I do want to say that all the actors in this movie really hit it. I think. I think they all just nailed it. So while Finn and Rose are having their story on the dreadnought, there's another storyline taking place in space in the same dreadnought. Uh, I mentioned the uh, chemistry between Kylo Ren and Rey. Well, Rey does leave Luke. She's kind of just, you know, um, she's trained. She's kind of fed up with uh, whiny Luke. It's a Skywalker thing. And takes off, and she decides that um, she had sensed that Kylo Ren can be turned. He's still struggling with that conflict within. Uh, in the process of that, Kylo had also saw who Rey's parents are. So, she races there. She gets there. Uh, takes a shuttlecraft, a little mi one-man shuttlecraft, off of the Millennium Falcon, which we'd never seen before. It was kind of cool. It'd be nice to have another Millennium Falcon with that little piece in there, so you put a figure in it. Pew. Yeah, and he, I really wasn't crazy about the last Millennium Falcon toy. Anyway, <laughs> that's a that's a story for another review. So she gets there. Kylo meets her, and he does take her to Supreme Leader Snoke, who informs her and Kylo Ren, who was unaware of what was going on. The reason why they were force connected was because he was being the bridge 
between the two. He was he was the one that was connecting them both, so they can talk to each other. Because he knew that if he put in Kylo, he he knew if he kind of opened that mind up, that she would see that he was struggling when he, apparently he really wasn't struggling, and that would bring her to him. Now this is very important uh, that little bit of information. So knowing that, um, she they, she does try to fight Snoke, uh, unsuccessfully. She does show that the new Rebel fleet are in danger because the new Rebel fleet, they're low on gas. They know they can't go into hyperspace without being tracked. Uh, they're, they're basically fish, fish in a barrel at this point. And they're being, literally, they, they're being taken out one by one by one as the shields go down. And all that's really left is Leia's cruiser. Uh, and uh, we'll get back on that ship in a moment. Because <clears throat> that's a whole different ball of wax that a lot of people had issues with. So while all that's going on, uh, he's showing her the Rebel fleet being very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi. There are, it's not as heavy as Force Awakens was with the New Hope, but there are little bits uh, of shadows from Empire and Jedi in this. I had noticed that. It, it's not like blatant, it's not like right out there, but as a fan you might see it as, oh my god, here we go again. Don't let it bother you. I, it kind of works. I mean, it really does work. So, he shoves her in front of Kylo Ren, uh, who then Snoke says, I no longer sense conflict in you. You are, you know, Kylo Ren. You you are, you know, the heir to, to Vader. You, you know. And he says, you see, I sense everything that he he's thinking and what he's going to do. And he's going to do this and that, and has he's describing how he how he knows Kylo Ren is going to kill her. Kylo is picking up his lightsaber a certain way. Now keep in mind, Snoke has Rey's lightsaber next to him on his throne, our arm of the throne. And and this is a big spoiler. Big spoiler. And I've said spoilers before, but this is a big one. So yeah, there's Flip a little forward a little bit, or go back, or just stop. But it's a big spoiler. So, still here? Continuing on. So, as Kylo is just um, moving his lightsaber, as Snoke is describing he's moving his lightsaber, her lightsaber is also moving very similar to how Kylo is. And then as Snoke says he is going to use it to kill his biggest enemy Kylo turns Ray's lightsaber on and impales Snoke with the blade just turns it on and goes right through him then force pulls the lightsaber to him cutting Snoke in half killing him making Kylo Ren the new supreme leader, Kylo Ren. Now, that being said, now he has his guards. I'm sure you've seen these guys in action figures and in the trailers, these little red samurai-looking guards. Him and, him and Rey are going back and forth killing these guys. Finally, Rey was right. Kylo was conflicted. He turned. So we thought. As I said, Kylo Ren is now supreme leader Kylo Ren and is trying to turn Rey to come with him and together they can rule the galaxy. Again, hearkening back to him being the new Vader, which was very heavily implied by Snoke earlier in the movie. Um, him wanting Kylo to be his new Vader. <coughs> Uh, this, of course, leads into a battle between Rey and Kylo Ren, a battle of force. Because now Rey is trying to force grab her lightsaber, or Luke's lightsaber, whoever you want to call it. In the meantime, Kylo Ren is also trying to hold on to it. So now this lightsaber is in the middle, being for force pulled between both of them, and it snaps in half. Something you had never seen before. And you're going to get a lot of that in this movie. Things you've never seen before. Never th things you'd never thought you'd see before. It was about around this time, Kylo Ren 
informed Ray who her parents are. And again, big spoiler. You don't want to know? Move forward. So we have Kylo Ren knowing who Ray's parents are. And who are they? Is it Obi Wan? Is it Luke? Is it Han? Is it Leia? No. We're informed, along with Ray, that her parents were essentially junkers. Junkers who sold her to um, the character that uh, in Force Awakens that was given her the food portions uh, for parts. They were sold to him. She, or Ray was sold to him, and then they took off that so they could take off planet. They bought their way off planet by selling Ray to him. Now, there is a theory I have, and some share, that because Snoke was bridging the gap of the Force between the two minds, that this is something Snoke implanted um, in Ray in that in Kylo. Uh, like a false, false image. Now I have read online just today that it has been confirmed that what was said between Kylo and Ray is true, or what Kylo told Ray is true about her parents. So, is there more to this? Are her parents just that junk, dead, dead junk? Because if, if we were also informed that they're dead and buried and in the desert on Jakku somewhere. Which means they, at some point they had to have returned. So, is this true? Did we really just hype everything up only to be disappointed? Uh, did the movie disappoint us with that info? Or did we disappoint ourselves by overhyping what, this, what the situation was? Uh, this was another big issue people had. The fact that we finally found out who her parents were and they were nobodies. Or nobodies. But I say this. What was Anakin when he was found? He was a slave. He was a slave. He was nobody. So, in defense of Rey, I take you back to young Anakin from episode one. Okay, so now I'll take you over in, back in space onto the little cruisers. So, while Finn and Rose and Rey are having their adventures on that massive Star Destroyer uh, dreadnought, S Snoke's ship, uh, shit's going down in space. Basically, the Rebels were trying to escape. Um, the New Order was able to f track them through hyperspace, through a tracker on Snoke's ship, which is being currently trying to be disabled. So, they can't go through hyperspace. If they do, they're out of gas completely, and they're just going to get tracked. So we have um, the ships are being fired upon, um, and the bridge of Leia's cruiser is destroyed. And everybody on the bridge, everybody on the bridge, including um, background characters Admiral Akbar and Leia, are sucked out into space. Not how they get rid of Leia. Because this is one of those other things you thought you would never see. Now you saw Jedis and Siths levitate stuff before. Rocks and ships. <coughs> we never seen them levitate themselves. So then this is what happens. While Leia is floating out in space, who somehow managed to survive in space, um, managed to force pull herself back to the ship in a very Superman-like fashion. Now, we had never seen anything like that before. She gets back on the ship, they put her back in, and then she's kind of like in an ICU unit for a while. This enters Laura Dern's new character in Star Wars. I don't remember her name, which is bad because I've seen the movie twice now, but she has very purple hair. <laughs> and she is now... Uh, the leader for now until Leia comes back. And her and Poe do not get along. Poe wants to go off and do this. She's telling him, no, we're doing it my way. And their way is basically they're getting all of the survivors 
onto escape ships, uh, which are have no guns or shields, and they're heading off to a uh, planet base that they had back when the old Alliance was around. So they can protect themselves and send out a signal for help. Um, so while all this is going on in space, so while all this is going on, all the, while all this is going on, we um, we have Poe trying to well Poe commits a, a mutiny. Uh, he he has his group uh, stun guns on. Or Duran and her crew. He goes to the bridge. Uh, he's going to try getting the ship ready for hyperdrive. Because at any point, Finn and Rose are going to have that hyperdrive down. <coughs> uh, Benincio's character, DJ, turns on them. So that never happens. Uh, in the meantime, the bridge of the ship door explodes open. Poe readies his gun. And it's Leia standing there. To it, and then she shoots Poe, <laughs> and then uh, he wakes up on one of the escape po escape ships, only to be told of the plan. Uh, Leia and the and, and everybody end up on the planet safely, except Laura Dern, who decides to stay behind and uh, kind of pilot the cruiser ship as a distraction. At this point, General Hux uh, finds out that. Snoke has been killed. Kylo explains to him that it was Rey who killed Snoke. And that he, in so many words, with, with a mighty chokehold, explains he is now Supreme Leader. And that they're going to go to this planet and finish it off. Finish the Rebel, finish everything. The Rebels get to the base, they put out a signal. Uh, and that, at that point, the New Order shows up. Uh, Kylo is now in charge. They're going. They have this massive cannon uh, that I guess has Death Star technology, and is going to basically crack open this massive door. Uh, Finn explains to them what this does. They go out on this uh, Hammond, Poe, and Rose, and a group go out and try to stop it, and ultimately fail. Uh, there's a very nice tender moment that happens between Finn and Rose. Uh, back inside, it has been determined that the signal has been reached to all the Alliance's allies, but nobody is answering. Nobody's responding. Nobody's showing up to help. All hope has been lost. So they're not helping. They, they figured, why help? There's no hope. Well... That is when, thanks to the return of uh, Master Yoda uh, and his words of wisdom to Luke, Luke shows up and has there's a nice tender moment between Leia and Luke. Uh, so we've been waiting to see. Luke goes out to confront Rey. Or, confront Rey. Goes out to confront Kylo Ren. I meant to say Ren. Confronts Ren um, after failing to kill him via the new walkers. He decides he's going to go down and he's going to finish his former master off. Uh, there's a nice uh, few moments where Kylo is just, there's some banter back and forth. Kylo attempts to attack uh, Luke. Lu Luke dodges every hit. Not once. Now Luke has his lightsaber ignited. Not once do the lightsabers attack. Luke is just avoiding contact. To which Luke does inform uh, Ben that he he's sorry he, he has failed him. And and, a, and hearkening back to his master Obi-Wan informs Ben that should he strike him down in anger just like his father Han he will always be with him. With that, Kylo does manage to take his saber. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Still here? Okay. Manage to take his saber and run it straight through Luke. Turns around. 
Luke is still standing there. Luke turns around and is looking at him. Uh, this is when we find out that the Luke that Leia and Kylo and everybody has been uh, seeing is a, and this is something we have, again, have not really seen before, is nothing more than a force projection from where Luke is on the island. Um, now this has taken a lot of energy out of Luke. Um, and again, this is a massive spoiler, and I've warned you at the beginning of the video, and in between, uh, we see Luke struggling, gets on a rock, looks like he's going to try to uh, meditate. We see him looking at dueling suns with that Luke Skywalker theme song from Tatooine in the background. Beautifully done by John Williams. We see the dueling, him looking in the dueling suns. And he pulls an a la Obi-Wan, disappears, and his cloak just falls. Luke Skywalker is no more. And again, this was a big issue fans had. Big issue. I liked it. Uh, and um, I thought it was really cool. So. Um. From that, though, uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, <laughs> from there, we do get um, the the rebels escaping onto uh, the Millennium Falcon, which Ray has managed to find them, uh, help them escape through the Force. Uh, they enter the Millennium Falcon. Ray and Poe meet for the very first time. Because remember, this movie takes place immediately after the Force Awakens. So Poe and Ray meet for the first time. Uh, they take off. Uh, Kylo Ren is pissed. And then we have a nice, subtle scene where we see these three kids from earlier in the movie uh, playing with a like, Luke Skywalker figure, kind of, toy. And one of the kids leaves, leaves the building. And it's a split second blink and you'll miss it moment. But he lightly reaches out. A broom flies into his hand. Goes out, looks up at the sky. See that he's wearing a Rebel Alliance ring that Rose had gave him. And he points kind of his broom up in the air like a sword. And because of the sky and everything, it has a slight blue tint to it. Hinting at something. I have my thoughts. Credits. <clears throat> so there we go. That's most of everything um, for the movie. Uh, now, here's my thoughts on everything. Um, I saw the movie Thursday. The uh, hype and everything was massive. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I get where the disappointments were. So I saw it again the next day. No longer hype. No longer. Now I'm here to see it just as the, a movie. And I really liked it the second time. I liked it a lot more the second time than I did the first time. So to those those who, who really didn't like it the first time, now that you've seen it and the hype is gone, I really do suggest going at least the second time to see it. If you have a theater that does like a special $5 Tuesday or something like that, I highly suggest taking advantage of that and just going to go see it. Give it a second chance. Because I really think this movie um, is not as bad as everybody thinks. As everybody says, it really isn't. Uh, everybody did a great job acting. It was great to see Mark Hamill uh, on screen uh, in, as Luke Skywalker. Um, I just absolutely loved the hell out of it. I don't know if it's one of my top three or four faves, but it's definitely still higher up than the prequels. Everybody did a fantastic job. Now we just have to get through next year's solo, on solo movie, and then we'll get episode 9 and uh, that's the one I'm really looking forward to because Leia is still alive Chewbacca is still alive um, so we still have two we still haven't heard any word from Lando Carissian so I'm thinking maybe Lando we'll see Lando and DJ somehow coming into play <coughs> uh, we have a hint of a new um, some new Jedi maybe with Rey being now the last Jedi. 
currently. And of course, this doesn't mean the end of Luke Skywalker either. He could very well come back in the Force Ghost and continue Rey's training. Much like Obi-Wan and Yoda did for Luke. So I really, I really don't think this is the end of Luke. I think he's going to be more than happy to come back. And I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm still loving this new trilogy. And I, I'm kind of liking a lot of the direction that they're doing. And some of the direction they're not, they, they, they didn't do. So uh, I will note that this is a very, um, this has been pointed out to me, very um, female heavy movie. As in, a lot of the guys <coughs> feel that a lot of the main female characters and female background characters uh, were betrayed more uh, stronger and forceful and, you know, and the guys were literally incompetent idiots who were constantly just slapped around. And so... A lot of guys have messaged me and talked to me about this. I thought I'd bring this up forward. <coughs> get your get your opinions on it. So that's one of the things you I'm more than welcome to comment down below and let me know what you think. Let's get let's get a little it's Star Wars. Star Wars is clear. Let's get we can you know let's keep it the Star Wars politics you know. But you know I'm interested to see what you think. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the way Luke was portrayed in this movie. I get it. I got why he he was in the direct. They went to the direction they did with him. So please comment on Luke. Um, anything, even if you liked the video that I just did, the review. Uh, let me know what you thought of the movie. Comment below. Like the video. Please subscribe so you can make sure you get all the comic good and goodness goodness that we give. And I have to say it. May the force be with you. Nanu nanu. Till next time.